Hello everyone and thank you for watching. This is Professor Ryan Paul and in this video I'm going to talk about one method to generate uh, to write the statement of purpose in a research proposal. First to review some of the things that I've talked about in some of the previous videos and in class. We started off thinking about how to choose and develop a topic and the main features of a good topic for research, that it's something broad, it's a big topic that can sustain extended uh, research and interest and investigation and that has a lot of different factors or issues going on. So there's a complexity there as well, but at the same time that you're focused on something specific, a specific problem or issue with uh, uh, that's related to that topic. And of course, that it's relevant, that it has some interest or purpose or meaning for people outside of yourself. The, the first step after uh, picking a sort of broad topic is to start brainstorming. And so we talked about generating keywords and phrases that you can use to find sources, questions that you might ask, thinking about the stakeholders who's involved in the, uh, in the issue or the, the topic that you're researching. And these are all things that we can ask uh, as we can start. Uh, these are all starting points really for us to start researching and finding out more information so then we can eventually figure out a particular topic or a particular approach that we want to take in our research. So once we've gotten some of these keywords and phrases and thought about some places and people that we might uh, look to to find out information about our topic, then we start developing a broad background knowledge, looking for different types of sources, um, everything from very basic factually oriented reference materials to more complex scholarly uh, debates about the subject. And we talked about then once you've gotten some sense of the the broad uh, background of the topic. You've got some sense of the landscape, how big it is and, and where you might go. Then you start refining your topic. So if you start off with something broad like um, student loan debt, then you start narrowing it down by specific topics and we uh, or specific aspects of the topic. And some of the main ways that we talked about starting to narrow your focus, thinking about the history of the subject, structure, categorization, and what if questions, possibilities. So thinking about how uh, the topic developed or how it's part of a larger topic uh, or historical narrative, um, what systems or larger institutions might it be related to, how is it structured internally, uh, what is it like, what category might we use to define the topic that we're looking at or the problem that we're looking at. Um, and uh, what if, what, what might happen uh, in the future, what might happen based on if certain things change in a situation. And we got then to this point of articulating what we were researching in a, a straightforward sentence, a, a sort of complicated but straightforward sentence that name the topic, I am researching X, that asks a question about what you wanna find out and that answers so what, that tells your reader and uh, your audience what it is that you uh, hope to understand, what you want to accomplish with your research. Now to think about what we're gonna be doing today. Um, first, I wanna go back and go over something that we talked about in the From Questions to Problems video, and that's the goal. Um, what is the object of your paper? What's the specific problem that you want to find out about, and what do you hope to accomplish in your research? So there's some basic categories of possible goals that someone can have when they're conducting a research program um, or research uh, essay. You might want to prove the fact or existence of a particular phenomenon. You might be trying to define or classify uh, the object that you're studying or issue that you're studying, identifying causes or consequences of the situation, evaluating or appraising the situation, determining the value of it or uh, the, the influence, and determining action or policy, determining how to respond to a particular situation. Let's look at these uh, in a little bit more detail and some potential examples of these different goals. So let's start with the first goal, proving the fact or existence of a phenomenon. Basically, this means you're trying to demonstrate that something is, that something exists, whether that's an actual uh, object or something more abstract like a pattern or a process. 
So some examples of essays or, or research projects in which you're trying to demonstrate the existence of something that could be trying to prove that a black that there's a black hole in a distant galaxy. You might be trying to demonstrate the existence of that. You might be trying to demonstrate the existence of a racial bias in drug conviction rates. Uh, trying to demonstrate that there's a previously unnoticed reference to another work of literature in a famous literary text, something that we hadn't seen before. You're trying to prove that it's there or prove a connection between a specific genetic sequence and a medical, medical condition. So the point I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot of different ways that this idea of uh, a lot of different things that this idea proving fact or proving the existence of something, what that can mean or how that can manifest, what types of projects are essentially proving uh, the existence of something. Defining or classifying, this is where you're trying to say what the, you determine the essential characteristics of a phenomenon. So uh, you could be defining the interactions between elements in a chemical reaction. Uh, you could be defining the differences between two related styles of music. You could be trying to determine what uh, animal species is represented in a fossil. What, what animal did it come from? Um, you could be trying to classify or define if a certain sense set of economic conditions qualifies as a recession. So again, the idea here is that define, classify, there's a lot of different things that can mean. There's a lot of different possible projects um, in all sorts of different fields that can be considered projects of definition or classification. Identifying causes and consequences. Uh, in this case, what you're trying to do is prove what has led to a phenomenon, what's behind something, a certain situation or event or, uh, uh, or occurrence, um, and or prove the results of it, prove that certain things have happened because of a certain phenomenon, or even predict what may happen in the future because of a phenomenon. So for example, you could be trying to, to uh, prove what was the cause, what's behind some unexpected observations in planetary movements. If they behave in a way that's against what we would think, we're trying to determine what causes that. Uh, trying to determine what were the causes, the reasons for an outbreak of a deadly virus. What factors led to the virus um, uh, spreading all of a sudden. And we might be trying to predict what the possible outcomes would be of an increase in the minimum wage. Um, what would that, how would that affect different aspects of the economy? evaluate or appraise. So here you're explaining the significance or the value of a phenomenon. Uh, so you could be, for example, trying to explain what contribution a specific industry makes to the larger economy, how it contributes to economic growth, etc. You could be trying to uh, demonstrate or uh, explain the continued influence of uh, past scientists' discoveries on present day research. How is it that this, these uh, dis uh, discoveries from the past are still having an effect on what people are researching today? Or you might be trying to explain or, or differentiate between the relative quality or success of a group of authors, which ones were the most successful, which ones were the best, trying to um, appraise, evaluate that difference between those groups. And finally, determining action or policy, you're suggesting a course of action, suggesting what should be done in response to a specific phenomenon. So you might be determining, should taxes on the wealthiest be increased? That's the question you're going to answer. You're gonna say yes or no, and, and how and why. You might be suggesting a course of how we can reverse the effects of deforestation or something more abstract or um, hypothetical. What would be the best way to survive the aftermath of a nuclear explosion? Uh, or it could be even something that's uh, purely purely a thought experiment. What's the best solution to a moral or ethical puzzle? Not even necessarily something that's a real situation, but you're still suggesting what would one do in this situation? What would be the best approach to this particular uh, uh, paradox or puzzle or problem? So let's think of some examples. If your topic were student loan debt, that's something that I've been uh, looking at in some of the different, using as an example in some of the past videos. What would be appropriate goals? Uh, what could be some appropriate goals that, that you have if you just know, well, I know I'm gonna be writing about student loan debt. Well, for example, under the proving fact existence category, uh, you might be trying to prove that there's an existence of a loan scam targeting students. Trying to, trying to prove that that is going on, this particular nefarious activity is going on and that students have been uh, victimized by it. 
you might be trying to define or classify whether or not our current levels of debt qualify as an economic crisis. Are they at levels where it is, um, where it's become dangerous, where it's become critical? Or you might be classifying what the different categories of student loan debt are. Uh, the different, you might be ca categorizing by them, them by amount or by origin. That is, for example, debt taken out for graduate school versus undergraduate, debt taken out uh, for private school versus public schools, debt that's taken out at a for-profit college versus a non-profit college, right? Those are all different ways that you might be classifying the internal uh, uh, categories of, or the internal features of student loan debt, the, the large subject. Under the category of evaluation or appraisal, you could be trying to determine just how much does the current level of student debt contribute to our current economic conditions. That's, that's an appraisal that you're making. You're making an evaluation or a value judgment about how much something, what, what effect a certain phenomenon has. Identifying causes and consequences. Uh, so you could be asking how has inflation or changes in government spending or any other sorts of phenomenon that have happened over the last certain number of years, how have they contributed to student loan debt? Um, that could be a cause. That's looking for causes. Uh, you could be thinking about what effects the current levels of student loan debt have had on our economy or what effects might they have in the future on our economy. So that's thinking about consequences. And finally, again, determining action or policy questions like how can we decrease debt levels? You might be trying to answer that and figure out a way to decrease student debt levels. Uh, or how can we better inform students and parents about the options for funding their education? Maybe that's a problem that people don't really understand what they're getting into and we need to better inform them. Or what could, should be done to prevent future loan scams? If that is something that you've determined exists, maybe you might be trying to prevent this from happening again. So notice here, um, one thing I hope you've noticed is that there's a lot of overlap in these different goals. There's, uh, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive from each other. In fact, as you'll see, sometimes the goals, they really build on each other. And the main difference is often just a difference in e emphasis. So proving that student loan debt has a negative economic impact is somewhat different in emphasis from assessing the level of that impact on a specific industry. And that's different in emphasis from making a plan to reverse the economic effect. All right. So there's overlap. The goals all uh, deal with some of the same information. You'd probably use many of the same sources, but it's about the way you're using the information to different effect to different purposes, ultimately. And so what you see is the goals, they build on one another. And anytime you are writing, doing any sort of research, making an argument, you are building on what other people have already done on the topic. You're building on previous study. So once you prove something exists, right, then you can define what it is and what it's made of, what its key features are. And once you know that, you can understand where it came from and what it might do, what might happen with regards to this thing, whether it's a situation or a specific object or a, a, a trend, a pattern. And then you can understand its effects. And really, you can't plan what to do unless you have some sense of what the thing is, where it came from, what it's doing. You can't really make a plan of how to respond. So the goals all build on one another. This also means, in sort of reverse fashion, more complicated goals, more complicated goals require deeper foundations. That is, uh, you can't really make a plan about what to do uh, if you don't know that something exists. Or if, more simply, you can't make a plan about how to respond to a situation if you don't understand what the nature of that situation is and what, you, what your desired outcome is. And you can't really understand that unless you understand how it came about and what might come from it. And of course, to know that, you have to have understand, understood what it is, how it works, and obviously the first stage is just knowing that it exists. So obviously in the case of certain physical objects, this is obvious, right? We can see it, we know it exists. But for example, something like racial bias in drug conviction weight rates, we have to know that that pattern is there before we can make any sorts of plans.
So how do we determine what our goal actually is? How do we figure out what we want to accomplish? Well, if you recall in some previous exercises, uh, we went through and we generated a lot of questions about our topic. And the goal was just to generate as many different questions as we could. They could be simple questions, complex questions. They could be questions that are very easily answered, yes or no questions. They could be questions that might not have an answer. But our goal was just to try to ask as much as we could so we can see, uh, again, developing that idea of how broad the landscape of our topic is. And so the categories that you make um, the next step is really to, to, to start to organize those questions into different categories. And, and the categories that you make um, or how you divide your, or your questions and organize them may de vary depending on the nature of your research question. And some questions may fit in multiple categories, just like there's overlap in the different goals. The questions that you ask often um, uh, can, can relate to different issues or, or different uh, research projects in the end, in the long term. And once you've divided your, your questions into your different groups, um, identify what the key questions are that you want to answer. No research project can answer everything about a topic. So you need to narrow down your questions to a manageable amount based on the focus of your general research statement, based on the focus of what you think it is that you're going to try to accomplish. Some basic categories, again, and this goes along with uh, the basic types of goals, uh, but you could be thinking about uh, basic questions, categories of questions about any topic, questions about the background or history, questions about causes and related issues, questions about the present situation, questions about the consequences, questions about possible solutions. And this is the point at which we can start further refining our topic. We've had this uh, basic statement, I'm investigating X because I wanna find out Y in order to help my readers do uh, Z. And now we can go back and even make that more specific. So if our, we started with, I'm investigating student loan debt in the United States, we can now ask ourselves, what, which specific aspects of student loan debt are most important? Um, maybe it's the average and total amount of burden uh, debt burden that we that we think is uh, important that we want to investigate. Maybe how it's increased over time is what we want to investigate. Or the economic effects of the debt might be what we want to investigate. So to specify, go from student loan debt to something, a specific part of student loan debt or aspect of student loan debt. And then the question, what is it that we want to find out? What are the causes and consequences of increasing loan debt? Well, now, um, which potential causes and consequences do I want to investigate? Maybe tuition costs, maybe government funding, how that's affected, maybe the economic effects of the debt. Maybe that's, those are the consequences that I want to figure out. And then finally, if uh, we had the broad uh, idea of the broad purpose of what action should be taken to deal with student loan debt, well, what kinds of solutions do I want to explore? Maybe I want to uh, explore government programs. Maybe I want to explore taxes, um, et cetera. So again, the purpose here is that we're, uh, as we research and as you read more and as you write more, you start refining your topic and refining your approach from something very broad like student loans to how government funding, changes in government funding have led to increases in student loan debt and how we can then, um, uh, what sort of programs we can implement to reduce the student loan debt based on that, right? So we've gone from very broad to much more specific. So here's an example of how we might have uh, written out now our even further refined student loan, uh, student loan debt research topic. I'm investigating the increase in student loan debt burden and its negative economic effects on U.S. students because I want to find out the consequences of increased tuition and decreased government funding in order to help my reader understand what government policies could be the most effective in reducing the burden of student loan debt. Now that is a mouthful. That's a very long sentence and not exactly the most easily understood sentence. Uh, I'm investigating the increase in the student loan debt burden and its negative economic effects on U.S. students. More specifically, I plan to determine the consequences of increased tuition and decreased government funding. This will then allow me to pro propose what government policies could be most effective in reducing the burden of student loan debt. So I've said 
what it, uh, I've named my topic, I've said what I wanna find out about the topic, and I've determined a goal. What is it that I'm gonna do with the information that I find out? And this is uh, a more uh, reader-friendly way of writing it, breaking it down into three sentences rather than one rather long, complicated, and confusing sentence. So now that we've had this uh, preamble about discussing, thinking about goals uh, and how to refine the goal and determine what it is you actually hope to accomplish, now let's think about the statement of purpose itself. So the statement of purpose is a part of a research proposal and research proposals, basically this is where an author states the subject of the research and what their plan is gonna be. In a research proposal, an author answers certain basic questions about the topic they establish the reason for their inquiry, why they're doing this research. They identify important contexts, uh, any background, any history or anything that's currently going on that's an important context to understand the reason or the nature of the investigation. It identifies major and minor avenues of research, that is the, the specific topics or specific aspects within the broad subject that you're gonna be looking at. And it sets out a plan to achieve those goals, how you're going to achieve them, what order you're going to be uh, uh, doing the different steps in the research project process and so forth. Purpose of research proposals, there, there really are a lot of purposes. I think you can break them down into three main purposes. Why do you do this? Why not just write, why not just do the research and write the paper? Well, in the professional world or the academic world, if you are a professional researcher, a research proposal is a way that you prove the value of your project, and that's really important if you're trying to get funding or grants. If you're a scientist uh, and you're trying to get money to do research, you need to prove to whoever has the money that there's some value in the project. And not only that, that you're the one to take to undertake the project. Um, even if it's a valuable uh, research question in and of itself, you also have to show that you know what you're doing. So proving the value is a really important uh, part of the research proposals. Um, for students, it's how you demonstrate to your advisors or your instructors that you have a sufficient understanding of the topic, that you know enough about the topic to make a complicated, to generate a, a complicated idea, to undertake a research program, to determine what you need to find out, where you need to look, um, and to determine really on an even more fundamental level, what is a good uh, uh, what is a good research topic within whatever subject that you're doing. And then um, finally, on the most uh, sort of basic or fundamental level, research proposals are how you can clarify to yourself what your ideas are and set out a plan that you can then follow and undertake rather than just jumping in without really necessarily knowing what you're doing um, if you're investigating a particular topic. There are a lot of elements of a research proposal. These are some of the elements that might appear uh, depending on your discipline. Scientists um, have a certain emphasis versus social scientists versus humanities researchers, right? But some of the main elements, and again, we're just talking about the statement of purpose in this video. Of course, the title, your statement of purpose, discussion of the background or previous research, discussion of the significance of your research, description of how you're actually going to be undertaking it, uh, methodology, that is if there's any particular uh, uh, theories or um, uh, algorithms or anything like that that you're going to be uh, applying to your research, problems that you might face, problems that you currently are facing, things that you think might be challenges in the research, and ultimately bibliography, sources that you've already found and other sources that you plan to research for the future. The statement of purpose, and again, that's our, our focus here. This is where you explain in broad terms what it is that you hope to demonstrate or discover. You state your main research questions and any significant subordinate research questions. And these are the things that you're hoping to answer. These are the questions that you really are, are main questions that you're trying to answer with your research. And then ultimately your answers to those questions will be what your thesis is once you've completed the research and writing. And your statement of purpose also gives a brief preview of the other sections of the proposal. 
So let's look at um, how you might organize your statement of purpose. You want to introduce your topic. So if I'm talking about student loans, I'm giving a, an, inter, a, 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 an introduction here that basically defines what student loans are um, and explains why it's a, uh, gives some, some background as to why it's a, an important topic. For most college students, student loans are a necessary part of life. Over the years, as the cost of education has increased, so has the amount of money students need to borrow to afford to go to school. So it's giving a broad picture, a broad definition of what the topic is itself that you're going to research. And the introduction should go on for as long as you need to describe the basic problem. The basic problem is students have to take out a lot of debt in order to go to college. Then you give your research statement, I'm investigating, blah, 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 in order to find out, blah, 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 right? So then you give that statement after you've introduced the topic, you say what it is, then you say your specific focus. And then you can briefly justify the inquiry with evidence, right? So it's not just, you don't just say, this is what I'm studying, but you say, there's a reason for studying this. There's actual evidence to point us to this as an important topic. News stories in print, online, and TV regularly talk about the high costs of college education, blah, 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 right? So this is where you give uh, a very brief in, uh, sense of what kind of evidence is out there to demonstrate, to show that your topic, that there is a problem, that it is of interest to other people. This is about relevance in some sense. Even though you are giving some evidence here, you, you leave most of the specific information for the background section. Um, as I said, the statement of purpose is a kind of a preview of the, of, the, um, of the proposal as a whole. So you leave the specific information for the, for the background section. You summarize the questions that, you'll, that you're going to ask, right? I will first investigate the changes in the amount of student loan debt. I will compare these changes. I will investigate how. Uh, again, this is going to be described in more detail in the description and methodology section where you go into some um, depth and some, uh, again, detail as to the specific questions you're going to be looking at, the specific sources you're going to be looking at, how you're going to be making these comparisons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is a kind of overview, again, of the broad questions that you're going to ask and try to answer. And you give a tentative thesis or goal. Right. Something like, ultimately, I hope to demonstrate that high rates of student loan debt have significant negative outcomes and that increased government funding would help students to pay for their education without as much debt. So it's a tentative thesis. It's something, of course, that can change. But it's what do you think you might discover? What do you what do you hope that you're going to be able to figure out? What kinds of answers do you hope that you'll be able to provide based on this topic, based on your question? Uh, and again, of course, you don't yet know what your final argument is. So your thesis is a projection based on how you think the research is going to fit together. And in the final research project, um, whatever your thesis is, ends up being is going to be at least a little bit different, if not radically different often from what you propose in the research proposal. You may find very different answers. You may find some uh, unexpected causes or consequences. You may find uh, solutions that you didn't think were going to be there. So even though you are giving a tentative thesis, you should, of course, um, once you get into the process of researching, remain open to changes and development. So let me just review uh, what we've talked about in this brief video today. Uh, you need to identify the key problems and goals in your topic, identifying what it is that you're hoping to solve, um, what issue, what questions you want to ask, and what you want to do with your research, what the purpose of it is. And determining not just the big questions, but also getting those uh, more specific questions, the more detail-oriented questions, what you want to ask, what you're going to try to find out about those problems, and what you need to find out in order to solve those problems. This is, of course, where we're getting specific. We're refining our topic, going from very broad ideas like student loan debt to much more specific uh, uh, parts of the topic, specific uh, elements, issues, details, aspects of it that we want to know. Since we can't understand a to any topic as a whole, it's going to be too big. We now need to focus on what we can address and what we want to try to solve. 
And of course, in the statement of purpose, this is where we explain our idea. We explain the reasons behind that idea, the reasons why you're asking it, what your questions are, and what your ultimate goals are. This is what the purpose of the statement of purpose is. So that's the end of this short presentation. If you have any questions, of course, my email is there. You know how to get in touch with me. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you in class or in the next video and have a great rest of your day.